Yeah. 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 Yes. I'm Carry on, talk amongst yourselves. We're not live yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so why don't we ready? Uh, 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 so why don't we ready? Um, it is 12.44, so we're one minute early. Oh, you know. how, about we, how about we start? That's too fast. Here, S-Rank it. No, S-Rank it. S-Rank it. Come on, man. S-Rank it. Went too fast. Oh, I think I'm good. Can you guys hear this one all right? Yeah. Yeah. This one's okay? I can hear you, guys. Of course, Aaron gets a mic. <laughs> wow, that's that's funny. So everybody in the back, we were gonna sit, but can you see anything at all if we're down here, or would you rather we stand? Yes. You wanna stand? We'll stand. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think we're ready. What's up, New York Comic Con? How's everyone doing? Yeah, Sonic! Alright, looks like we have a packed house. Right, you, guys can, you guys can hear me all the way in the back? Alright, cool. So, uh, what do you guys want to talk about? Sally! Sally! Please! Sally Akers, your return! Oh! Will Sally return? Him, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wait, do we have Sonic there? No. <laughs> That's Archie. All right, you guys. We want to welcome you all to the very first Sonic the Hedgehog Town Hall presented by IDW. Woo! Yeah! Uh, we've got some exciting announcements in the world of Sonic Comics for you. Some brand new art to show off. An awesome row of panelists who I'll introduce you all to shortly. And then we're you know we're going to be taking some questions throughout. But before we get to all that. We want to know a little bit about you guys, you know, and so we have an idea of who we're talking to. So for those of you who love playing Sonic games, you really dig the characters, but you've never read a Sonic comic before, make some noise. Woo! Okay. Good, good. You know, we're really excited to go on this journey with you together, right? All right. Now, let, now let's hear from the audience members who have read Sonic comics before. Woo! Like most to you, I love it. Now, all right, here's the real test. Who among you has read every Sonic comic in existence? Yeah! yeah nice. That's off to that guy. I saw like ten hands. Like, I didn't, I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, now that we've gotten to know you guys a little bit, let's kick it off with some introductions, shall we? All right. To my immediate right is the editor of such IDW titles as Samurai Jack, Ducktales, just announced Big Hero Six. But more importantly, he's your new Sonic editor, Mr. Joe Hughes. Yay! He's not Ken Fenders! He's not Ken Fenders, that's great! Let's get your name up there so people can read it. Uh, Alright, next to him, to the right of Joe, is a guy who was instrumental in bringing Sonic to IDW. You can thank him later. IDW's Chief Creative or now. Officer. Now or now. Or now. Yeah, yeah. Chris Ryle. Yeah. All right, next we have our friends from Sega, starting with Sega's licensing specialist, uh, who has also played a key role in bringing Sonic to IDW. Please give a warm welcome to Michael Cisneros. And Michael, can I just say how much I love your Twitter handle? Thank you. I, too, am a Michaelholic. <laughs> Aww. All right, last but not least, we have some other dude on the end. Let's get started. <laughs> no! Do you guys follow the official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter? Yeah! yeah! I highly recommend. Yeah! You know his face. Please welcome Sega's social media manager, Aaron Weber. Woo! Yeah! Aaron, can you tell the people what's that Twitter handle? Oh, you guys know it, right? Yeah, yeah Ruby uh, Eclipse. Sonic underscore Hedgehog. Thank you guys so much. I thought it was Ruby Eclipse. Oh, that's me. That's just me. <laughs> Alright, cool. Everyone get out your phone and go follow that now. We'll wait. We follow them. 
All right, cool. And uh, while I'm at it, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Steven Scott, IDW's PR manager and your humble moderator, moderator for this town hall. Um, and that's me. <laughs> All right, please, let's give another round of a hand for our panelists. passion here and on our Twitter feeds and everywhere else we've already heard from all of you like I love this thank you so much for the support already all right let's talk Sonic comics wait that's cool yes come on you were at my panel last night and you did not have a question about anything from that panel your question was about Sonic. <laughs> well, you came to the right place. I'm just very enthusiastic. I'm sorry. It's all good. Don't, Never don't apologize. apologize. Yeah. Never apologize for loving Sonic or anything. But um, I just want to echo what Chris said. Like, coming into this, when I found out I was going to be the Sonic editor, yeah. I was like, oh, cool. I really like Sonic. Hi, Sonic. Hello. Yeah. Mike's, 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 Mike's. yeah. Mike's on. Mike's. Oh. Coming into this. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I really, so we announced this, what, the Friday of San Diego Comic Con. Louder still. <laughs> Just project, project. Hello. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we announced this, <laughs> the Friday of San Diego Comic Con, and uh, over the last couple of months, I've learned how much all of you really, really care about Sonic, and it's really cool, and it's really energizing, and it's pretty humbling, too, to see how much this, there's just a passion for Sonic, and I've been working in comics my entire adult life, which is a weird thing to say out loud, but um, I've been working in comics my entire adult life, and it's just really cool to see this level of passion. I've never seen it in anything else, and that's really saying something, because like, I've done Superman stuff, and Legion stuff, and all these different things, and you guys are amazing, so thank you for coming, and that's it. <laughs> That. So I've been with IDW since this, this okay. I've been with IDW since 2004. We've done a lot of big license titles. Like we brought the Transformers back after they. Were, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and we did the same with the Ninja Turtles. And with both the, uh, yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean generic, you mean generic mutants, <laughs> amphibians. The X Files. You mean generic um, transforming robots and generic. Um... This is their panel, not a second panel. Oh, okay. 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 All right. But so, doing these things, you know, we, we knew that the Transformers had a big fan base. We knew the Turtles had, you know, generations of fans. Uh, and so, we thought, okay, you know, we know what we're doing with these things. We know how to take the fans' passion and, you know, that they, the stuff they liked before and channel it in new ways and do something big and exciting and. and we heard from a lot of those fans, and we thought, okay, we got this. We know how to talk to the fans. I but just, you. Oh, my God. The, <laughs> of the passion and, and fan letters and YouTube videos and everything else you guys have done already have blown away any of our sort of preconceived notions about passionate fan bases. So, again, like, as much as we're comfortable with fans that love this stuff and know what, know what uh, we're doing to you know, make you happy, this is still a level above. And so it, it just makes me so happy to see. <clears throat> That's all yeah. <laughs> uh, before we get to any announcements, uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit about how Sonic came to be at IEW? Yeah. yeah. No. Yup. Really. Yup. We need to learn about secrets. This guy. This guy right here, Michael. Uh, Michael and I worked together a few years ago on. Uh, do we want to name? Do we want to name? Sure. Names? Yeah. We did. We did Speed Racer. When Speed Racer was first coming back as a new movie, and we did comics based on the old Speed Racer. The Next Generation cartoon show. Yeah, and so Woo! Speed Racer was the thing. That's where we met, and you know. Yeah, when we were looking for a, a Sonic home, uh, Chris was my first call, and that's pretty much how it happened. I'm pretty happy I took that call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Michael and I like had a good relationship and working relationship back then, and uh, I appreciate like crazy that we got the call on something like this. Yeah, it was great. And thanks for all your support. Don't touch the thing. I got it. I didn't know uh, some of the mics might need a yeah. little tweak, tweak. It's pretty vocal, and it's not projecting. Hello. <laughs> Back row, can you guys hear us okay? Yeah. That mic works. How about, how about, Mike, you try talking. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
Well, there's no loud buzzing noise this time, so at least we got that. Yeah. At least there's that, so that's good. Yeah. You guys, you guys may not might not know a lot about about Mike, but Mike's actually been uh, at Sega in our LA office ever since since I moved down there from San Francisco, working behind the scenes. There's a whole lot of people, I think, both at Sega and at, at IDW that work behind the scenes on a lot of the stuff that you may not always know about. It's really exciting that, that you get to see Mike today because you never see him on our live streams, right? You never see him at most of the stuff, but he's there and working hard. Uh, as are many, many people on the teams that bring the stuff like these comics to you. So, yeah, seriously, let's, let's hear it from those guys. And we don't even put it too lightly. Like, we know that Sonic has such an esteemed history in comics, and so we feel the responsibility to make sure that you know, we carry that on and make everybody happy and uh, do some great things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that mic good now? No. Test, test. Test, test. Hello. Can everybody hear me, hear me now? Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's better to take pictures. <laughs> on the screen. All right. So, do we want to talk about who's going to write it? Maybe we should take some questions. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah we who's writing it? Let's, let's we start with questions. Yeah, we want this to be a town hall, so we want to hear from all of you even more than we have. And so, let's start off with a couple people. All right. All right, uh, gentleman in the Sonic Mania teacher. Oh, Woo! Oh, so you guys, IEW, you guys, everybody. So, will you be crossing over with anybody? Because if they cross over with Batman! 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 Alright, so for you guys in the back, uh, the question is, who could Sonic possibly cross over with? IDW has a pretty big history of doing big crossovers, and so... Well, we want to focus on getting Sonic back out into the world, you know, these are conversations that we have as much as you guys have, and so I think we, it's we a discussed it. To yeah, have. We, yeah. Dis we discussed it, and there's some, some, probably some pretty cool things coming in the future. But. We've all kicked around our favorite pairings yeah. as much as you guys have, so. It's gonna be, it's gonna be at least a year before he shows up in the X Files. But what? Station squares. All right, I see Spider-Man's hand in the back. I'm sure you might talk about this with the slides, but I was curious, are there going to be any writers or artists that you're going to like maybe invite from Archie into the new fold? Or? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the question was, uh, as far as, are we going to be inviting any previous writers from Sonic and artists into the new fold? There may or may not be some creators you know and love working on the books, and there will definitely be some creators that you will learn to know and love working on the books. So. All right, the gentleman in the cap over there. Um, so after the second Genesis wave, which killed 85% of the cast, <laughs> <laughs> I've the, never read uh, that, I'm Sega sorry. Sega stepped in and put a lot of restrictions on the comics. Like, Sonic can't show too much emotion, and he's not allowed to have, like, family members. I was wondering if those restrictions are still carrying over with you guys, because, you know, Sonic is such, like, a carefree and, like, fast attitude, and, like, when he's, like, upset, like, in anguish, you know that stuff's, like, serious and real, because he's never sad. <laughs> All right, do we want to take advantage of this microphone over here? Should we yeah. get people... Oh, yeah, yeah, we can, we can raise that one. Yeah. Cool, Although I... Although I, I do see a hand shot up in the back, though. Oh, wait, well, let me let me let me answer, answer the question yeah. first, and then we'll. Only uh, <laughs> oh, taking we questions this, today. We're not taking we're not the right answers. We were this close to yeah. completely avoiding that question. <laughs> uh, this is a really good question, and, and I'm glad that you asked it because it's also a good chance for us to clarify a bit too. Uh, and his question was, you know, in the past, um, has Sega put certain restrictions sort of on the characters to say Sonic can and can't do this? You know, what are the limitations? Can he have family members? Can he show certain ranges of emotions? Right, and it's it's really good. I'm glad you asked that. Um, and one of the, the key things, I think, from the Sega side and from the Sonic team side is that while there are certain rules and regulations, for example, Sonic isn't plaid, right? And that's, that's like, that's a rule, like if you make Sonic plaid, oh, we can't do that. Um, there are also certain amounts of freedoms that are allotted, and, and I think a lot of us, in fact all of us probably standing up here today, feels very important that the Sonic comic has certain freedoms so that they can tell stories that maybe we aren't telling within the video games. 
Uh, and I think that's kind of the core of what you're asking is, are, are they going to be able to kind of do certain things with the characters or tell certain stories that we aren't telling with the video games? And I think as far as the four of us are concerned, the answer is please and yes. <laughs> yeah, it was very important for us to actually make sure that IDW had the freedom to um, make the characters do things that we really couldn't really do in the, in the games. That's really good to hear, thanks. And, and you know, from our side, like we've done so many licensed comics, and with each of those, there are certain things that, you know, to be true to the characters and the storylines, and we've never looked at those rules as restrictions. It's more of like, what, what are the things that allow us to tell the best stories that represent these characters? So we're happy to adhere to anything that sort of makes for the best comics and, and you know, gives you the characters that you recognize. Yeah, my primary job is to make sure that we tell great stories that are true to the characters that we have, and we will do whatever it takes to make sure that happens. Within reason. <laughs> we may want to start lining people up to the mic, so yeah, we can, I think that's uh, a good idea. That might be the easiest route. Can we just get up, or? Go ahead, yeah. Okay, so this question is actually on everybody's mind right now. Will Sally Acorn, Bunny Rabbit, and all of the other Satayam Archie characters be returning in this iteration of Sonic? We need to know. How many how, how many of you guys are in line to ask that same question? Oh wow. That's so, that's so. Well, IDW, you guys want to you guys want to answer this one? Oh, that, that is the first time we've heard that question. Right? Right? Yeah, this doesn't actually come up in any meetings, or so. emails, or YouTube videos. Or... Really? We were the first. We did not anyway, I'm they're, they're joking. They're joking about that. They've been talking about this a lot. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> um. So this is a new partnership between IDW and Sega, and we are really excited to present brand new stories and. This is a new partnership <laughs> between the IDW and Sega, and we're really excited to bring you brand new stories within this brand new partnership with characters that you love. So, I would say stay tuned. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Just look forward to new stories within the All Sonic right. universe. All right, thank you. <laughs> Will you um, still keep the original numbering from the um, Sonic and Sonic Universe? Will you keep Sonic Universe? We will be starting brand new with number one. So that question was, are, are you going to start, uh, are you going to the numbering or start with the brand new number one? And the answer was, we are starting fresh, the new number one with the IDW series. Um, I have two questions. The, um, besides the... Um, Knowing that the Sad AM cast will be there, will we also have characters from other um, shows like Adventures or Sonic Underground be put in there as well? And also, my second question is, will um, we actually see Sol Sonic and Sally back together? <laughs> so just for one point of clarity, we were very non-committal about the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Intentionally yes. non committal yeah. yeah. So again, but this is it's a brand new series and the oh there we go. It's a brand new series and the storytelling possibilities are pretty much limitless. And so we'll see what we are able to do and we'll just tell the best stories we can to make everybody happy. Okay. <laughs> hey, say something, testing the mic. Test test. Hello. Wow. Test right. test. Wow. That's and cool. test test. Hey, that sounds better. Yeah. There we go. Hey guys, um, hey. Uh, I'm really excited about this, but uh, as a fan of the games and some of the cartoons growing up, a big part of Sonic the Hedgehog for me has always been the music. How do you deal with that huge part of Sonic in a medium that doesn't lend itself to that? Has that been something you've been thinking about? That's a really good question. It doesn't come up very often. It's something that I've talked about for like pretty much my entire editorial career. Like It's really hard. One of the things I love about comics is that as long as you have talent, imagination, pencil and paper, you can do almost anything. The one thing that's really hard is translating music. And Sonic has 
I think the best music we've ever seen in video games. Love that FM synthesis. I know that James Roberts, who also works with the IDW, releases uh, a little playlist of tracks with each issue. Um, so I'm looking forward to see, be, maybe seeing that, you know. Should I be listening to Rooftop Run or City Escape? <laughs> Listen to Why your heart. <laughs> open my heart! Open, open your heart, yes. Um, concerning the comic itself, uh, since it went from Archie to IDW, will this be... <clears throat> Will this be a soft reboot or a continuation where Archie left off? So it's just all me now, right? It's just all <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. This is fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Thanks, boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is a brand new series, and we are telling new stories with these characters. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a clean break. Right. Okay, uh, I got two questions. All right, so number one, is the, are the Sonic comics going to have like any kind of ties or connections to the games? You wanna take this one, Mike? Mike's gonna take this one. All right. Uh, the Sonic comics, uh, we are intentionally making sure that they are built in a world that IDW controls so that they can do more things with the characters that don't necessarily uh, affect canon for the games whatsoever. So there's more compelling stories and the characters can have uh, you know, more challenges and more risks involved with whatever they're doing. And, All right. and that's not to say, too, that you won't necessarily see tie-ins or see moments where the games and the comics um, might kind of interlace themselves, uh, and you could see things from a different angle in the comics or, or, or things that are kind of mirrored. So, yeah, st stay tuned, I think, is, yeah. is the answer there. Also, um, this isn't related to Sonic, but I'm just wondering, are there any other like properties that you're interested in? Always. <laughs> we are very trustworthy people. Um, to follow up on the last question, um, it, it, could we expect, like, um, in past with um, Archie's um, tie-ins with um, like the Sonic, their Sonic comics, if they were to do a tie-in with, with the games, they would like either flat out to tell, like, retell the story of a classic Sonic game, or in the case of their last story, which was kind of like a loose interpretation of Sonic Unleashed. But um, other than that, though, we didn't really see like much like acknowledgement from in the games towards um, the comics. So I was wondering, in regards to the IW comics, will um, like will we be seeing like if something like if there's a moment in the comics that has it references something in the games, will there be like can we you say whether or not the games will reference what happens in the comic? That's a good question. So short version is, will the games reference the comics? Um, as far as I know right now, that's not something that has been like worked into, say, like Sonic Forces, uh, for example. Um, but this is one of those those cases where it's sort of like a stay tuned and, and who knows what will happen someday in the future. All right, thank you. Yeah, right, just, just to quickly follow up on that, like the, since this is all brand new for us and, you know, starting in 2018, I think the best point of reference we have is what we've done with things like the Transformers, where we started with an all new series to give old fans and new fans a good jumping on point. And then from there, we've spilled out into so many different directions, tying into some of the games or some of the animation some or some of the movies. Lines, yeah, so I think there's a ton of space and um, things that we can do. Um, so we are, we do, like I say, want to give everybody a solid jumping on point at the start. And then from there, you know, we're very adept at finding all kinds of good ways to give you guys what you want. Great, thank you. Uh, hi. Um, so two quick questions. Um, is it, um, like, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, is it gonna be one Sonic, or is will there be eventually be a classic Sonic and a modern Sonic? And what are the chances of seeing Chris Thorndike from Sonic X? <laughs> Whoa! I think Joe, Joe. I think I think the last number we settled on was was eighty seven different Sonics, right? Sonics. That was the number, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eighty seven. Yeah. I'm gonna start with red and blue like Superman. <laughs> Crisis of Infinite Sonic. Yes. I think, I think what, what you'll probably see as, as far as, as where the universe is grounded is kind of uh, what we've got within, within the world of modern Sonic, as far as I know, right? Yes. Yep. Confirm? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're not probably, probably not gonna see many multiple versions of Sonic running around. As far as Chris Thorndike goes, I think he's a Sonic X thing and pretty firmly planted in the world of Sonic X with his big house and his swimming pool that Sonic just falls into. Um, so I think, I think he's gonna stay there as far as we know. Okay, thank you so much. This guy here is just like clapping as loud as he can.
<laughs> you may have already uh, answered this one indirectly, but I wanted to know if Sega put down a list of hard restrictions on what Sonic stuff you can or cannot use, like, at the beginning. Like, say a writer wanted to adapt Sonic Labyrinth, and, like, <laughs> Sega would step in and say, no, you can't do that, or a writer wanted to, say, put Madonna in the comic. Or Luigi. And, uh, yeah, like, or even a character from something else. Does Sega, like, have limitations, like, really hard limitations on what you can or can't use? So, so Sega might not step in and say you can't use Sonic Labyrinth, but uh, even if they didn't, I would. <laughs> oh! Just because that was like my least favorite Sonic game by a mile. Um, but, but that said, let me actually pass this one over to, to Mike, who can probably answer better. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't put any kind of hard and fast rules saying you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, we approach things on a case-by-case -case basis, and whatever really makes sense for the character and the brand, and just telling the story, um, you know, of Sonic in general, making sure that we're doing it properly um, without jumping the shark. Thank you. We've learned to hold our really crazy requests till year two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Establish exactly. ourselves, get them to trust what we're doing, and then we start throwing the real crazy stuff their way. I'm the Madonna really email is in my drafts folder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to send yet, but give me like 12 months. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you man. Uh, my question's related to the UK counterpart of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Uh, Sonic the Comic. You're aware of it? What I love about IDW is that when they take on a license, they remember that there is a UK counterpart out there, Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, Judge Dredd, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Most recently, you announced to do a Cry of the Werewolf dedication to Steve Dillon. What's, what's your thoughts and your stance on Sonic the Comic? Do you plan to touch on it and reprint it at some stage? Archie, Archie, Archie had it, you know, they probably had tons and tons of years to get at it and they didn't even touch it. I mean, I'd say for now, for us, like we really want to establish a new Sonic comic. So we've all kicked around different options of things we could do down the line. But right now, our focus is very firm on giving you guys a brand new, very exciting Sonic comic. So that's that's where we're at. And you know, as we develop these things, different conversations take place, and we'll see. But uh, right now, the focus is very firmly on the new. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I wait. Why did um <clears throat> why after twenty four years um Archie didn't say the goodbyes at, at issue three hundred? They were, they were very close to episode they were really close to issue three hundred. Yeah. So I guess the question was Archie was really close to issue three hundred and why didn't they continue on to get to that milestone? Not, not to mention um <laughs> Not to mention the sign bigger drive special and a cliffhanger. Yeah, I mean, I think the best I can say is like when we took on the Transformers, and I don't mean to keep reverting back to the past, but that's sort of our frames of reference. Is I, we were aware that the Transformers comics ended on some cliffhangers. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, uh, no. I mean, uh, no, I mean, at the twenty-four year, the sign, the RT Sonic comic, um, just uh, cut their story right off. Why couldn't they end it? Why couldn't they say goodbye at issue three hundred? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think all of us as collectors probably share the frustration when things don't end the way you want them to. Um, sometimes there is extenuating circumstances that, that don't allow that. I, I think that, so this, this, is a, this is a really great question. I'm sure a, a number of people in this room have the exact same question or in the past months have had this question. You know, was the old series going to continue to issue 300? Uh, what, what happens with certain storylines that just kind of get cut off halfway through and you're left kind of hanging like, but, but, but what happened? Right? Like, what, what, what happened to those characters and those storylines that I, that I cared so much about? Uh, and, and it's tough for us, too, because there, there are points at which decisions have to be made. And the, the best answer I can give you is that there, there are reasons. Trust us. that There are reasons that kind of things happened as they did, uh, and that, that it didn't continue to issue 300. Uh, and, and I wish, I think all of us wish we could go into a lot more detail for you, but we can't. And that's, that's the simple truth of it. Um, but we are really excited, even though those reasons happen, and even though decisions have to be made, we are thrilled by what IDW kind of presents and the new stories that they are going to be bringing out. So can, can we give you like a table, a list of reasons of, of why it happened? Probably not. We simply can't. We'd love to, but we can't. 
um, but we are thrilled about what's coming up next. That, and that's a really great question. Thank you very much okay. for asking that. We're all completist, and you know, so I understand the frustration. But what we can control right now is just making great comics that you guys will love, and that's what our plan is to do. Well, so should we should we build on that and maybe talk about what we are going to do in a little bit more detail? I think this is a great time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stay in line. Stay in line and grab that. All right. Uh, so I think this is the one of the burning questions we've been receiving a lot as to. You know, who's actually going to be taking on this new series, so... How, how many of you guys are curious about who the, the lead writer is going to be? Ian Flynn! Wow. Ian Flynn! Uh, that sounds a little excited, but not really that excited. How many of you guys are curious? Yeah! yeah. Alright, that's pretty good. All right, what, any, any guesses? Ian yeah. Flynn! Ian Flynn! Yeah. No, Ken Penders. Oh, oh. I called it! I called it! Hi there, New York Comic Con. This is Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and I'm welcoming you to the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog panel. I'm very excited to announce that I'm going to be writing the series, and I'm even more excited that you guys get to be on the panel with Chris, Joe, Aaron, and Michael. I really hope we're actually over there. Anyway, can't wait for you guys to see the book that we've got planned for you guys. And please be gentle. This is a first song panel for some of these guys. Be nice, because they love the book as much as I do. Can't wait for you guys to see it in the spring. Ciao! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh! 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 Wait, yes! Oh my goodness! So, Ian's back. I said no to that part at the end. <laughs> my bad. There was a conversation. It's, it's my fault. You can blame me. I approved it for the record. So, uh, it sounds like a few of you guys know Ian. Yes. Know his work. Um, fortunately, he couldn't be here with us, but, you know, I've known Ian for years, and so I'm thrilled to be working with him again on doing Sonic, which is, you know, what he does best. And, guys, do you guys want to talk a little bit about Ian's history with the character and why he's the perfect choice to help us launch this new iteration of Sonic Comics? Yeah. <laughs> It's not enough to say that Ian loves the characters, because a lot of people love the characters, but on top of all of that, he's a great guy, and he's a really, really good writer. So it was not that difficult of a decision to go with Ian Flynn to write something, because it'll make you guys happy to hear the news, and it'll make you really, really happy when he keeps making great sound of comics, so. Speaking as someone who who is you know also kind of reads the stuff as a fan, like I, I grew up, before I went to Sega, I grew up reading the Sonic comics, right? And, and reading the stuff that Ian had written in the past and hearing when, when it was like confirmed that you guys were going to work with him, I was, I was thrilled too, like from a fan perspective, to know that Ian was, was coming back to this. So, super stoked. How many of you guys are really stoked for Ian? Just one more time. Yeah! Yes! I called it! Especially this guy in the white shirt. <laughs> He knows what's up. Yeah, so, so <laughs> glad we got Ian on board. I mean, that was okay. like literally the first name we had on the table for a very long time, and I'm so glad IDW was able to, to lock that down. The one last bit of that is, so when we talk to Ian, Ian's written a lot of Sonic comics, and you know, sometimes writers reach a point where they've, they've said all they have to say about a character. Ian's enthusiasm and excitement and story ideas are, like it feels like he's coming to the character brand new, and I love that. Like, he seems just as excited as anybody who's always wanted to write the character and never gotten that chance. Yeah, he sent us pitches like 10 minutes after we yeah. asked him to send us pitches. So, he was prepared for this and to Chris's point, like he's been writing the characters for so long that sometimes you can't get burned out even if you love something. But all of this is just fresh and new and I'm just really excited for you guys to see what he has in mind because it's really good. It's really good. So. And, and which is frankly why we wanted to start with the new number one. As much as we want new fans to be able to jump on, we also wanted Ian to not feel like he was hindered by anything in the past. Like, come in and do new stuff and, you know, just have fun without worrying about, you know, anything that might get in build the way of world, telling new stories. Like, build a world in Sonic that you always wanted to make. Yeah. That's what we told him to do, and so that's what he's doing. Yeah. All right, so Ian mentioned in the video that he'll see in the spring. Uh, shall we get a little more specific than that? Ooh, yes. No. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, Joe, do you want to let us know when we can expect issue number one? Issue number one will be in stores the first Wednesday of April. Woo! April 4th, 2018. I should have started with that. Yeah. 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 Ye
specify 2018, not like 2021, like 2018, April 4th. And then, let me off the release schedule. Issue two is coming seven months later. Oh, <laughs> no. No, no, no. Sorry, seven days later. Oh, oh. yeah! And uh, yeah, you took the joke, so uh, <laughs> issue number three will be an additional seven days later. Yay! And issue four. And you're, you're probably noticing a trend here. <laughs> it's weekly. Wrapping up the very first month, issue number four arrives only seven days after that on April 25th, 2018. <laughs> so, you guys were without Sonic Comics for so long, we wanted to really give you that boost and give you what you needed and wanted and been just yelling about. Um, so we have the whole like four, first four issue art coming out to you in April um, and then we're going to be moving to monthly after that. There will not be 52 yeah. Sonic books. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joe, we know Sonic is fast, but how the heck are you going to get four issues out in a single month? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have different... Stay tuned. <laughs> um, and we got some art to show you guys. You want to see some? Yes! Wait, who drew that? Can, can you guys guess who drew this? Tyson! 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 Oh my God. Mania Man! Oh, Joe, Joe, are, they, are they right? Is that, is that Tyson Hess? Oh, let me look a look. Hold on. No, that looks like Tyson. That's Tyson. That's Tyson Hess. Yeah. Woo! Yes, that is Tyson Hess. He does say it right there. Oh, I guess it says right on the screen. I like that. Yes, that is that is Tyson. And you guys know some of the stuff that Tyson's done, right? How many of you guys played Sonic Mania? Yes! He did the animation. That's a good amount of hands. How many of you guys love that opening animation? He did it. He did it. I know. We don't have to find a Pino. Rockstar. We spent a lot of time on that. Tyson poured his heart and soul into that thing. Uh, and Tyson's worked on previous comic stuff as well, right? You guys know some of his work. So, yes, that is that art is by Tyson Hess, and I think, is there something related to that art here today? Yeah, everybody in attendance to the panel today can take this home with them. We printed up nice cards just to commemorate the first panel. Oh, yeah! Right. Yeah. Right. Shall we take a few more questions from the audience? Oh, hello. So, major thing I'd like to ask, uh, the previous comic series had a reputation for being somewhat gritty and environmentalist and somewhat dark. Are you going to bring a part of that aesthetic back? So, the question was, you know, the uh, past series got a little gritty, got a little dark sometimes. Is that going to come back in the new series? Um, I'm going to have to probably let Joe answer this one, but... You know, maybe Joe, a good starting point is kind of following up after after forces and with what happens to Tails and, and all of that stuff. Maybe we should. Spoiler. Oh, oh I'm, the audience oh, is God. right here. Oh God! Oh God! He just spoiled it. Guys, nothing happens to Tails at all in forces. He is just fine. Okay. <laughs> all right. He's just fine. It's just a joke. Anyway, Joe, take it away. <laughs> it's just Tail now, unfortunately. <laughs> just, just Tail. Tails and Tails. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, you know, my goal is to make, the, our goal, all of us, is to make the best comics that we can. So it's not necessarily about having the, a certain tone throughout all of the comics. It's just telling the best stories that we can. So I hope that answers your question. You know, things aren't, com things aren't complete yet, but the, again, Ian Flynn is the writer now. It feels good to be able to say that out loud in front of strangers, <laughs> instead of just talking about it with them in the office. So, um, as for Tone, if you're familiar with Ian's work, I think you She's maybe have an idea of what, he's, you know, he's building brand new stories, but you'll have an idea of the kind of great writing that he does. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You, you will be more satisfied in the future. Just wait, wait and see. Um, hello. Um, I hello. Remember, I remember reading that Tyson Hess was the author of, or at least the cover artist of a comic that ended up getting canceled before, uh, like during the switch. Um, under that line of thought, that comic seemed to have featured, at least on the cover, Mighty and Ray. Does that mean that some of the characters that haven't been there since the Ken Pender suit might be reappearing? 
I think this is this is answer question. Uh, you're you're kind of talking about different characters. Uh, there's a pretty clear divide between like let's say Mighty and Ray, who are actually uh, like video game characters. They they did not first appear in the comics. They first appeared in like Sega Sonic the Arcade. How many of you guys knew about Sega Sonic the Arcade? Yeah. This is way more people than I expected to know about that. By the way, it's like a little three-player arcade game, and that's where Mighty and Ray kind of first showed up. They had Sonic shoes for some reason. I guess that they hadn't designed new shoes yet. So a little fun trivia pack there. Uh, those characters are firmly rooted within the Sega world, and they weren't first introduced in comics at all. So that, I think, is important to note. It's kind of a clear divide between the two. So, so as far as Mighty and Ray go, they're Sega characters. Who knows? Anything can happen with Sega characters. And then also, are we going to see more with the special zone? Because I thought that story was pretty cool. The special zone. Which which one? And slash which reference? Uh, reference to sort of what they had with. Um, Sort of magic, uh, Ixus and August before he became Walter, all that stuff, uh, the stuff with uh, King Max, that sort of. Oh, we're getting we're getting some uh, some Sadam here, yeah. Okay, okay, great great show by the way. One of my favorite shows as a kid. I love that show. Yeah. So no news on anything like that. That's one of those questions that that uh, the guys have pretty much explained. Wait and see what happens, you know, with, with the future. And that's, I think, where that answer is going to stay for now. Great good question, though. Thank you. Um, hi. So, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, are you guys going to have, like, your own version of Sonic Universe? That he's referring to the sister title. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, oh yes! Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey yeah. the end of Studio Act oh, oh, 2. <laughs> and I hope that answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, we are taking almost nothing off the table right now. Um, um, so right now we're focusing on the brand new series, which will um, you know start off with in April, as you know, and um, going to run for the the future that we're thinking of right now, as far as we've planned. Um, as far as additional books or additional spin-off series, that is certainly on the table, but we haven't got that far yet. And the second question is: Are you going like, to make your own version of? Uh, skirt to Hedgehog? <laughs> we will probably be creating some original characters. Do not steal. <laughs> yeah, do not steal. Original character, do not steal. Yeah, Tyson Hess. That's Tyson Hess. Hi. Um, hey, Tom Baker. I have two questions. One for all of you. And Speak up just a little bit. Speak up just a little bit. Hi. I don't think the mic's on. That mic is not working. So just... Oh, the mic's yes. on. Yes! Talk uh -oh. loudly. Shout! Okay. So I have two questions. Yep. One for all of you, and the second one for Aaron Weber, who I love Ooh. very much. <laughs> um, the first one, will there be a Sonic Forces comic? Okay, the question was, will there be a Sonic Forces comic? Um, hmm, how many of you guys would be interested in seeing a comic that was set in the world of Sonic Forces? Yeah! <laughs> Even the IDW guys are like, yeah, yeah, we love that. Okay, that's good to know. Well, we'll, we'll take that. Uh, I'll take that back to Sega, and, uh, and just pass it on to some people. That, that's not a that's not a confirmation, but that's a, we'll pass it on for sure. Good to know there's excitement. One more question. I'm a little nervous about this one. Okay, the question is for Aaron. What is your favorite Sonic stage, and explain why? Oh my God. That was two questions. Do you want to add it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was two questions. Okay. All right. I have a lot of stages that I really enjoyed. I'm going to give you the short list. I'm going to tell you my favorite. Short list, Angel Island Zone, when it goes up in flames, because I totally did not see that coming. And as a kid, I thought that was super cool that then you continue on through the birds, like, jungle area. Uh, ice Cap Zone, just because it's awesome. Um, zones I hated, Carnival Night Zone, because of the barrel. <laughs> oh, yeah, barrel. You'll notice there's a lot of Sonic 3 here. Um, I did enjoy Sonic Zones from a lot of the other games too, but probably my, my all-time favorite zone was the first time that I got to the end of Doomsday Zone because that final yeah. battle for me was so cool. Uh, as a kid, as a kid. Got the same feeling, by the way, later at the very end of Sonic Adventure 2 with the Bio Lizard. Big shout out to that one. I love, I love that fight with Sonic and Shadow. Those are, those are some of my favorites. I kind of cheated and gave you more than one answer. Sorry. All right. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you. Okay, so Sonic Adventure 2 was uh, part of my childhood, and I want to know 
if you can bring any comic to life in game form, any game to life in comic form, what would it be? Well, you guys know I'm not going to say Sonic Labyrinth. Take it anyway. Can this just be like this is just our, this is a personal preference thing, right? Yes. This is what. Yes. Okay, let's see here. Man. Sonic 06. This was. Without a 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 enormous Big the Cat fans between our offices. The assistant editor on this book, David Marriott, who unfortunately couldn't be here, loves the Big Big the Cat like no other, and it is a wonderful thing. So if you love Big the Cat out there, you have a kindred spirit working on this book. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is on, there's no mic problems anymore? No, there's no mic problems. Hi, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've been up here, like, there's a lot line of people, so I'm gonna make it quick. Um, for the Sonic comics, and how, the fact that it might be related to Sonic Forces, um, well, will it be, well, maybe will it explain some of Infinite's backstory, like what he was before the, well, wait, oh, right, Mania. Yeah, sure. Um, like, will it be, will it explain some of Infinite's backstory if he ever made the comic? Like, will it explain? All right, let me just get this straight. Question one, will we ever hypothetically see a Sonic Forces comic? And we're like, maybe. Question, I'm not making funny at all, by the way. So qu question two is like, tell me about what's going to be in the comic that you haven't confirmed. <laughs> just to get that straight, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just messing around. I'm just kidding. Um, there, there, we know there's a lot of excitement, right, around Infinite. How many of you guys really like Infinite's theme song? Woo! Yeah. The edgiest song of all time. And after all this time, I'm back It is more. super edgy. And we, and we love that about it. Um, we, we know that there is a lot of excitement around Infinite and around those other characters. Um, and our, our teams at Sega are looking into ways and options to present to you uh, more information surrounding those characters because we know you guys would like it. At least we think you would, right? How many of you guys want to know more about the characters in Sonic Forces? Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah. I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, so, so the short, short answer is uh, wait, wait and see. We're looking into stuff right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. That is all. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, considering most of my questions have already been answered, I'm left with uh, what I've been dreading. Uh, considering you're building your own universe uh, with only the Sega cast, how would you handle a creating a new character? Would they play a major role, minor role, or purposely be made the most annoying character in all of existence? <laughs> All right, first, it's really rude to talk about Charming the Bee like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Some people love Charmy. How about a certain Charmy? Should we even ask the audience what they want to this one? It's kind of what you guys think. I think, I think, so this question is, it, as far as new characters that are introduced in the comics go, will they play a huge role, a minor role? Will they just be annoying? The, the question I think that maybe the four of us up here want to know from you guys is, what, what do you want to see? Annoying! You want to see oh, yeah. a good character. How about, how about come on, do, do it by hand? How many want to see like a really cool new major character? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Bring him to the game. See, like, Bring him or her to the game. Character? Still? And how many of you want to see a really annoying character? No. <laughs> hey, you're trolling. Oh, you're trolling now. No, no. You're just trolling. Remember the focus group from the Pucci episode of The Simpsons? That's what this happened. God, the Cool. So, so to answer your question, that's still something that the team is looking at and working on actively. And I think the feedback that they got here is, is really good. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Okay, though I don't hold myself responsible for what might come. <laughs> We're blaming you for anything. All of it. Guy in the hat. That's that's gonna be the guy. I have a few a few questions to ask myself. Three, I think. Okay. Question one. Uh, how do you come up with the with the plots and the storyboards and all that? That's interesting. The derivatives, all that. Is that an Ian question? 
Oh, okay. Or, or your question. Were, were you talking about the games or the comics? The, like, are the, like, how do you come up with some of the comics? Oh, okay. Um, we work really hard. <laughs> no, uh, I'll speak specifically about Ian. Ian has an incredible imagination. I just, Ian is a dude who could write these comics forever. I just, I'm realizing in working with him that he would just never run out of ideas for what to do with these characters in this universe. And it makes my job a little bit easier, honestly, to work with someone that, with that level of imagination and thoughtfulness and passion for all of this. So, he and I bounce ideas off, off each other. I'll say, all right, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I want, and Ian will present it, and I'll think, wow, that's actually smarter than what I had in mind. So, that's pretty cool. So that's more or less how that goes. And then from there, like, it's such a collaborative medium comics that Ian will, once he puts the script together, the artist will then thumbnail, he'll sort of sketch out what he wants it to be, and then those come back and everybody can make their notes and adjust things. Just basically flow the story visually the best way possible. Um, and there, it's just a lot of teamwork, basically, kicking things back and forth, story-wise and art-wise. One of the things I love about working in comics is that there are so many moving parts all of the time when you are making monthly books. Like, you're working on three or four issues at a time, always, and you have to, it's my job to keep all of that in order and not go insane. Um, especially when you're putting out four books in one month, like we're doing next day, because I'm the head um, But yeah, so much, it's just, it's a collaborative effort between a writer and an artist, and a letterer, and an inker, and a colorist, and it just, when, it's, when it works, it's a really beautiful thing, and that's why I love comics. Right. And if I could just drop a quick factoid about Ian, just to give a little bit of insight into his process. Um, do you guys remember the Mega Man crossover from a few years back? Yup! Yup! So as soon as we got the go-ahead on that, we called him up, we're like, Ian, we need you to put together a pitch for a Sonic Mega Man crossover. He said, Give me one minute, I'm gonna email it to you now. I already got it. <laughs> 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 I've been this for a while. So that's kind of how, how Ian works. No, that's, how, that's how his pitch worked for this, too. Yeah. Like, really, 15 minutes later, which is in my inbox. He, like, All right. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's always ready to go. All right, so question two Will Big the Cat appear? Oh. I actually want to know this myself. <laughs> I think if David Marriott has anything to say about it, he will star in the spin off comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else, there will be a gentleman in our offices dressed as Big the Cat. So, we will post pictures. I hope that's at least somewhat satisfying. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. I know. I know. Third question. Okay, I thought this question out very, very, a lot. That's a very poor use of grammar. I applaud myself for that. Well, Sonic the Hedgehog, go fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like that you were you were like waiting to just drop that joke on us. Like, is it, is it, is it gonna go past? First of all, first of all, you're not sorry. <laughs> it's not the thing you so that's sorry. But you're definitely not sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I know the questions. I know all the questions. I am, I will leave satisfied. <laughs> all right, you guys, we just got the 10 minute warning just a little bit ago. We want to try and get through all your questions, so let's just try and keep it to one question. Make it a speed round. Okay, um, I'm going to take the opportunity to have all you uh, professional Sonic people there to settle a debate I have with a few of my friends. Is Sonic Adventure 2 really the best story in video games, or was I just 11 when I played it? You're 11! <laughs> You may have been 11, but yes, it's the best story in video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's both those things. It has yeah. inspired multiple anime. <laughs> you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, and also, will my fan character be in this Sonic Forces comic that you just announced at this panel today? <laughs> just not announced. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. How you doing? I mainly have a question regarding to Sonic Boom. I'm loving the cartoon immensely, and one of my favorite things about the show is I love the fact that it will not take any punches in parroting itself, parroting the fan base, Sega itself, the game. There's a lot of nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Do you think any of that writing type will be in the comic you're going for? You just talk about like smart writing and jokes and whatnot? Yes. Uh, I wouldn't put it past Ian. Ian's pretty, sh Ian's pretty sharp with how he writes things, so I wouldn't put it past him to, uh, you know, put a couple elbow nudges in there for you. I, too, am a fan of smart writing, so. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you ship 
Sonic with Amy or Sally? Ooh. Personally. That is a really personal question, and I just met you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sonic X Princess Elise Five Ever. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. I have a question. This is down for the future. Is it possible when you guys put the Sega characters, like Jet Set Radio, maybe Yakuza in Station Square, who knows? And remember, I know you want Fantasy Star. You know you want that Fantasy Star in, in the Sonic comics. You know, is that possible in the future? Can the, you know, just to spread out, you know, and make the other younger audience understand who the Sega cast is as well, and get the more character development inside these comic books. Is it possible? In the future. So we, we've actually done this in the past. Do you remember the Sonic Racing Transforms yes. uh, comic spinoff that we did? Yep. Where like Vice from Skies of Arcadia shows up and a lot of the other characters. Uh, so it's happened in the past, so I don't think your question is, is too out of the ordinary. Uh, the answer is kind of simply wait and see, and it's all about the story that these guys want to tell in the world that they want to build, so it has to make sense. I would totally answer that question in depth, but we just got the five minute mark, so I just don't have time, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Thank you. so we have about what, ten questions in five minutes, so we'll go real quick lightning round, and if we miss, we'll be upstairs at our booth too if you need uh, any more follow-up. Oh. Okay, hello. Um. My question is, there are a lot of locations from the series, like Station Square and Central City. Are you allowed to use those? We can use anything from the games. Yeah! There you go. Next question. Go, go, go. Hi, I was wondering, um, in the comic, is the cast going to be pretty compact, or else are we going to be able to see more of the vast universe? And more specifically, are we going to see Team Chaotix? How many Team Chaotix fans in the house? Yeah! All right, good to know. We'll see. Um, would you say that the comics have infinite possibilities? <laughs> not, not everyone may have gotten that one. I want you to know that I got it, and thank you. Hi, um, I'm cosplaying as Comic Sans, and uh, I wanted to know, I wanted to know, when can you expect a 25 issue arc of Sonic 06 that dives deeper into the romantic aspects of Sonic and Princess Elise, only for that to not matter in the end? To, to save time, I'm writing this right now. It's on my personal Tumblr. Thank I hope you. you enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> I know this has already been asked, and I know you can't say anything, but the Archie cancellation. Was it Ken Penders? If you can't say anything, just blink. Blink twice. If you're ever silent, just blink. I don't I'll... know who that is. Really? <laughs> Never heard of him. Not, not sure who that is, sorry. <laughs> just don't let him in. Yeah, no Ken Penders. Well, okay. Hello, shameless plug number one. Uh, just putting that out there. I was wondering, being that this is a new corporation for Sonic, will y'all be accepting new artists by any chance? Yes. We talked the other day, and I remember you. We will, you want to know my record? We will be exploring working with, you know, artists you love and artists you will learn to love. So there will be new people. Well done. Wait and see. <laughs> yes. The awesome thing is when we announced, we heard from so many artists and writers that turned out to be giant Sonic fans that we had no idea. So I think, yeah, we'll be able to bring you people you already know and love, people that you don't yet know you know and love, and everybody in between. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, two questions I just needed, yes or no, okay? Will Wisps like Yakker return? No. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Also, will there be more and Knuckles memes? <laughs> and maybe. <laughs> okay. Quickly, quickly, we got one more thing for you. This is a two part. It's pretty simple though. Is, are we gonna see any Turtle Sonic characters? Or, since you're part of the IDW universe now, maybe we can integrate some previously existing Turtle characters with Sonic. Just throwing it out there. Ooh. Anything's possible. Okay, last question. <laughs> How long has this been in the works? Oh, how long has this, has this partnership been in the works? Always. Um, yeah, in our minds for years and years. Yes. All right, you guys, so that's going to wrap up for questions. we got one more thing to show you, and then that's our panel. We're not done yet. Oh, yes! Sonic, how are you? And all of that loathing has been focused into this invincible instrument.
infinite destruction. You may call me infinite. Sonic! Eggman's nice. forces have chewed through our defenses at Green Hill. Eggman's army has everyone terrified. Here goes, partner! Sonic, you take the lead. Rookie, they just make sure you take good notes. I will teach you fear, then pain. We have to show them that strength doesn't just come from numbers. Let's go! Together we do what we can do. When we join forces, the sky's the limit. First official Sonic Play Talk IDW Town Hall. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. We gotta clear the room for the next panel, but if you guys want to meet us outside, we're